I mean, this is a pretty sizable deal. It's three billion, and that's just for the auto part. Mm -hmm. Another 160 or 170 million for the sure. the hardware and building materials part. Mm -hmm. What's what's prompted this whole thing? I think you've got to go back to JD a number of years back in 2008 when we separated out our financial services business from our furniture retail. And that set the platform for a, a much uh, change in strategy with regard to the diversification. So where we saw our business as a pure furniture retail play in 2008 and a, and a financial services business very much t working together, the separation out of those businesses laid the platform for us to now to run a, a standalone retail business and a standalone consumer finance business. And Not a furniture retail business, a broader retail a business. A much more diversified retail. So because where all our all our um, financial service income is coming purely from our, our furniture business, this acquisition gives us the diversification that we need in terms of, of, of the growth in that financial services business. And the platform has been laid over the last number of years to be able to do this transaction as we announced today. Are you particularly looking for businesses that rely on credit sales sure. here? Sure. Yeah, I, th I think our, our core competency is certainly a credit business into the middle mass market. Our, our target market is middle mass market LSM 4 to 8. That's where we trade. That's where we've trade for the last uh, 28 years. It's our, our core strength, core appetite. And uh, we've been... You know, if you think about the, the process that we've been through over the last number of years in terms of the credit granting collection, the process, the centralization of, of all of those dynamics in around financial services, that's the platform now for where we need to go to, to uh, into the future. And we need to diversify our revenue streams away from pure furniture retailing. So what do you actually get for this three billion rand from Unitrans Auto? We get a great, great business. I mean, Unitrans Auto is going back businesses to the 1920s. It's been around for for you know, nearly 100 years. It's a, a really, really well-run business. If you remember, if you go back and trace the business over the last number of years, it's been a listed company under the Murray and Roberts stable in the Steinhoff stable from their investment in, uh, in early 2000s. So it's a, a it's really well-run business, um, very, very strong balance sheet, uh, cash flow management, fantastic management team. And really, that's not, I think that's not necessarily the issue. The, the, the standalone for, um, retail motor business is one piece. Our, our challenge and certainly opportunities we see it is to start to introduce the middle mass market entry level motor vehicle and the financing of entry level motor vehicles and not necessarily where their business is currently positioned. I mean that business will continue in any event. So would you be looking at doing the motor vehicle finance through your financial services division? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you, do you have the balance sheet to support that? Because we we're talking about big yeah. money, it's not just yeah. a, no. a bank bed or a chair. <laughs> No, we've got, uh, I mean, we are very, uh, you know, we're a relatively ungeared business. Our gearing sits at about 13%. So we, we, uh, we're very ungeared, uh, with lots of capacity from a, from a headroom point of view when it comes to uh, gearing. And so this transaction provides us some, some scale. We've got the traction, obviously, because you've got the forecourts, you've got the garages to be able to do the, do the business. And uh, we've got a very strong balance sheet. So no, gearing's not, uh, not one of the things that keeps me awake at night. Uh, how are you seeing the consumer at this point? We have seen an uptick in vehicle sales. In fact, a, a yeah. strong uptick over the mm -hmm. past few months. But yeah. the consumer is still a little bit indebted, still a little bit vulnerable. How do you see them going forward? I think you've got to look at the consumer in, in different buckets, so to speak. You know, our middle mass market customer is not as indebted as your, as your higher LSM customer. I mean, if we've done a lot of research in terms of, you know, how much are our customers indebted, and it's not, it's not significant. We somewhere sits between 15 and 30 percent, depending on which of our brands that you trade in. Now, I think the, the higher LSM customer is, is, in a, in, is still in a situation uh, from, a, from a debt point of view. So I, I think if, I mean, if you go to our trading update, the last four months we were released, we, were, we showed growth of, uh, from a traditional retail or furniture retail point of view of, of nearly 20%. Christmas was very buoyant. I think there's a lot of pent up demand, et cetera. But we've had, uh, yeah, the, the last six months have been, been, been pretty bullish. Pretty positive, I guess. Stein, Stein build, uh, how, how does that fit into the overall picture? Because now this is moving into okay. hardware and building materials and tiles and things. I, I think the, the opportunity again, as we've identified in 2000, what sort of business fits with the JD, uh, if you like, existing business. So the DIY, turning your house into a home uh, from a furniture point of view, from, from and we lend into that target market. So we basically are, are able to understand that customer. We provide the, let's call it the operation platform, provide the merchandise, provide the structure in and around. You know, our, our target market is effectively being able to upgrade their home, be, you know, be it from a furniture point of view, as well as from a DIY. So I think it fits very f firmly within our, uh, our, our state of strategy. Gretchen, you pointed out you're relatively ungeared. You have a strong balance sheet. 
Why have you taken the route of paying for this with shares rather than raising capital to do it? I, I, well, we debated that obviously a lot. The, the opportunity for us to grow our financial services business, we sit with a gross debtors book of some eight billion. The opportunity to try and increase that from, you know, from, from the eight billion to double it over the next three to five years, we need the headroom from a, from a gearing capacity to- So you to need that money, we yeah. Need, we are, we're gonna use that money inside the business over the next three to five years to grow the business, grow the, grow the balance sheet. And that capacity from a gearing has to be there for us to, for us to do that. Uh, shareholders need to approve this deal. Have you been yep. speaking to your shareholders in the run-up to the deal? What's, what's their view? Because I see yeah. we had the share price up a minute ago and it was down about 3% today. But, I mean, the market yeah, is down. Sure. Um, I, yeah, we've been to see our, our, our top 10 shareholders. We've got 51% from those, from, those, uh, from those shareholders. So, effectively, they've given the deal a thumbs up. We still have to go through, you know, the, the balance of the regulatory and, and uh, competition commission and the like. We've, we've got uh, to do that over the next couple of months. But effectively, we think we can get the transaction through by the end of June, and we should be able to consolidate the businesses from the 1st of July. Uh, I think one of the other points that I need to make is the, the Steinhoff's global positioning with regard to its, its businesses allows us, from a South African point of view, to be able to introduce that skill here, the global sourcing, uh, into our existing businesses. So a, we have a, a, you know, a commercial relationship with them as well, allows us to import those, that IP, the global sourcing, into South Africa. And that, again, is another attractive option for us. So it becomes by a strategic a partner for you. By them being a shareholder, we get, you know, we get access to that, that IP, if you like. How, how long have you been talking to Steinhoff about this deal? Um, on this particular deal, we had our uh, early early discussions in the start of the new year, so we've been we've been going. So it's been, it's been really quick. Yes, yeah. Well, you know, the, a couple of months is uh, is you know we you know there's a lot of stuff that you had to go through. Um, we had to you know look at the businesses, understand the positioning of those businesses, understand the capacity and, and the opportunity for us within JD Group, and uh, yeah, now it's a it's a it's if you like it's a, a milestone for us from a business point of view. Why not take the local logistics business from Steinhoff as well? Non, it's, you know, it's not our strength. We're retail and consumer finance. That's it. I assume, we, assume yeah. as a strategic yes, partner, yes. you will be able to piggyback off that. Well, uh, they do our distribution and logistics in any event uh, through our warehouse and distribution centres. They manage that with the joint venture arrangement that we have already in place with with Steinhoff. Logistics or Unitrans Logistics. In addition, you know they they are you know strong partners of us and have been strong partners of us through you know through the the history of JD Group. So yeah, we have a very strong cultural fit, understanding, and 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 we work well together as a team.